Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today I am so, so excited to share with you my review of the Salt New York Cream Tint Pros, as well as the mini palette that I store them in from the brand. I will of course be giving you my pros and cons and thoughts on these products, but I'll also be doing some swatches in this video, as well as an application so that you can see how I prefer to apply each of these products. Before we get into the review, I just wanted to say a special welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today. And if you enjoy this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. So now let's go ahead and jump in. So the order of operations here for this video today is going to be, uh, I'll jump to the swatch video first so that you can see how these swatches look both in my studio lights and in natural lighting. Then I'll be doing an application live in this video so that you can see how they apply. And then last up, I'll be giving kind of my thoughts and information about the products like price, color lineup, etc. So let's go ahead and cut to the swatches first here. So the products that I have from Salt are their mini palette, which is a nice um, vegan leather and it's super, super well made. It kind of like magnetizes itself shut, but there's also a really beautiful zipper. And then the inside has a decent sized mirror, although I find myself not using that super often. I just usually have another mirror with me anyway. And then I have these four cream tint pros, which you saw swatched in that swatch video. Up here, I have light medium in the sculpt and bronze cream tint pro. I have beige in the radiant cream tint pro. And then both of these at the bottom are lip and cheek cream tint pros. And I have cranberry and spice. The only one I'm not going to use on camera today is cranberry and that's because I am going to pop a photo on the screen right now showing this on both my lips and my cheeks in a look I did not too long ago so I just feel like it would be a little bit redundant to apply that since you can see it in that image. So today I'll be applying um, these three here on my face and I'll be using spice as both a cheek color and a lip color just so you can get a sense of how that looks in both places. As for the tools I use for applying these products, I have a few favorite methods and I would say my top choice is to apply the bronzer with some sort of either a damp sponge or just the same brush that I used for like buffing out my foundation. So for example, I have this e.l.f. Flawless Base Brush and this is like the perfect size to just kind of use it to apply to my cheeks. So if I'm already using a brush, I'll probably apply the bronzer with just my brush. And if I'm already using a sponge for the day, I'll probably just apply that with a sponge. As for the lip and cheek and the radiant, so the, the blush and the highlight essentially, I found two methods that work for me. The first is a duo fiber stipple brush. This one's also from e.l.f. It's just called their stipple brush. And this works and distributes the product really well across your cheeks. But I find that I actually prefer to just go in with my fingers and then tap it out. So that's what I'm doing in today's video. I'll be using a combination of the sponge and my fingers. I just wanted to let you know that if you are more of a brush person, I've tried it out with both and they work great. So I'm just dipping like the butt of my sponge here right into the pan of bronzer and then I will start applying that kind of underneath my cheeks and then I'll blend up onto my cheeks and my temple as well once there's a little less on my sponge. 
and I do the same with my forehead. So I usually pretty gently bronze my forehead. I don't usually put tons of bronzer there. And something I love about these products is that it's really hard to like over apply in a way where you can't like back out of it. So even if you put a little bit too much on your face, it's really easy to sheer it out because it's a really emollient cream. And then lastly, I do put a little bit just down my, my neck as well. Okay, so before I catch this side up to speed, I wanted to show you them side by side. So here is the side that has the bronzer on it. And here's the side that doesn't. So I love it because it blends super seamlessly into my foundation. And I don't even really think it looks like I'm wearing an additional product. And then switching over to my fingers, I'm gonna dip into Spice and I just kind of give it a swirl. And again, same as what I said with the bronzer, it's pretty hard to over apply this and not be able to kind of back yourself out because even if I put a little too much on, I can always go over it with like the foundation brush or the um, sponge that I was using for my foundation for the day. And because it's a cream, they'll meld really nicely together and kind of tone that color down. So going in with just a little bit more because I want a bit more color payoff to help balance out this eye look. I will note that when I'm using my fingers, I wipe my finger off in between every time that I dip into the pan because I've noticed that my finger has a tendency to pick up foundation in a way that like my brushes and my sponge don't. And then if I put it back into the pan, it gets kind of gunky in there. So uh, just something to note if you do like to apply with your fingers, that might be a me problem. <laughs> um, it's definitely not an issue with the product. It's the fact that I'm getting foundation on my fingers. Okay, so again, here is the side with the bronzer and the blush at this point. And here is the side with just the bronzer alone. I'm going to catch the other side up and then we will do highlighter. Here's a perfect case of what I was saying before. I brought the blush in just like a little closer to my nose on both sides than I would like it. So I'm just taking the part of my sponge where I applied foundation earlier and just kind of stamping back over that a little bit. There's no like additional product on my sponge. Um, I just am kind of softening the edges. And there you can see it's just a little bit less intense in that inner area. Okay, last up here, I want to apply Beige, which is the shade of the Radiant Cream Tint Pro that I have, and that's basically their way of saying a highlighter. So I'm gonna apply it the same way. And I will say my highlighter formula feels a little less creamy or like slippery, I should say, than my other two. And I actually really like that because it makes it super easy for me to just apply it exactly where I want it and be sure it's not gonna like spread on my face at all. Look how gorgeous that is. And I love how it catches the light. Like when I'm facing forward, you can really see, like it doesn't add that much glow. It does a little bit, but then as soon as you turn and the light hits, it's just so, so beautiful. I'm gonna do a little bit down the center of my nose as well, just and on the, on the tip of my nose. So again, here's the side with all three cream tint pros at this point. And here's the side with just bronzer and blush. Going back in with a tiny bit of spice to tap like right along the edge where that highlighter and blush meet, just to kind of meld things together nicely. I'm also going to put spice on my lips. And when I used cranberry in that photo I showed before, so I'll pop it up again here, I didn't use any lip liner or anything like that. I did more of like a smudgy, smeary, kind of like popsicle stain look. But today I want to kind of test out doing a little bit more of a defined lip with them. So I'm gonna first go in with my Essence Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner, and I have this in the shade Because Duh.
we'll see how this goes. I actually haven't applied spice over top of a lip liner before. So dipping into spice and I'm gonna work kind of slowly here just because I'm not sure how it'll look with the lip liner. And you might notice that like on my cheeks, it feels like it gives so much glow. Even before I had the highlighter on, the, the blush itself added so much glow to my face. And for some reason on my lips, they always look really matte. And that happens with both shades. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's my lips or the foundation I'm using or, or what, but just an observation. Oh yeah, I really love that lip color a lot. <laughs> and I like how it looks with this look. I think that the lips balance out the eyes nicely and that was part of the point of me applying these with a more glam eye because I wanted to show that I think they're really versatile and can work with a variety of looks. So now kind of getting into pricing on these products, pros and cons, and my final thoughts. So Salt New York has two different palette sizes. The first one is the Palette Mini, which is the one that I have, and this costs $20. They also have one that's about double the size. So mine fits four cream tint pros, and the, the main palette fits eight cream tint pros, and it's $35. So aside from those two palette types, the rest of the products they sell are the cream tint pros, and those sell for $16 each. There are three different cream tint pro categories. So the first one is the Sculpt and Bronze, which is just what it sounds like. It's six different shades of bronzer or contour shades. The next category is Lip and Cheek, which again is just what it sounds like. It's a product that can be used as a blush or a lip color and that comes in eight different shades. And then the third category is the Radiant Cream Tint Pros, which is their version of a highlighter. And there are six shades of the Radiant version. So as far as pros and cons go, if you couldn't tell while I was applying them, I think these products are absolutely beautiful. The biggest pro for me is that they're a versatile formula. I feel like I have so much flexibility when I'm working with them to back out of any mistakes I make and to make sure that the final result is really the look I was going for. They layer well on top of every foundation I've ever tried them on, as well as on my bare moisturized skin, which I really love. And then it turns out the name of the game for me with the positive aspects of these products is versatility because the last <laughs> point that I wanna make here in the pro category is that I love the versatility of being able to apply these with a sponge, a brush, or my fingers. I think that makes it useful for anyone's preferences. I think it makes it easy to take this traveling because I know I don't need additional tools or anything special to apply them. So I really appreciate that aspect of these products as well. Now onto the cons. To me, there are very few cons, but depending on your personal makeup preferences, these might be more or less important to you than they are to me. So I thought I would mention them. The first thing is that these don't dry down to a texture where I'm confident that they're going to last a long time on my face. They definitely fit in with more of that like dewy glowy vibe that's really popular right now which is great but I'm always nervous that if I rub my face on something or if I like wear a hat or something like that since it's winter time right now that it'll rub this product off and this product lasts fairly well throughout the day as long as I don't accidentally rub it off on anything but basically the minute my face touches something and drags this does come off so depending on your makeup preferences and kind of what you do in your average day that might be a huge problem for you the only other negative aspect of these to me is the price Salt New York is a small independently owned makeup brand so I understand that that just comes with a higher price tag and $16 is by no means like in even the luxury category. I'd say it's maybe in the high-end makeup category or on the very, very tippy top end of like affordable makeup in my mind. But I think where the price starts to grind my gears a little bit is the fact that you're not getting that much product. So if you look at the pan size here and then you look at how shallow it is, you can see that you're not 
getting a ton for that $16. That being said, Salt New York does frequently run bundle deals where if you buy a certain dollar amount of product or if you buy like a palette and two cream tint pros or whatever the ongoing deal is, that you can get a discount on your order. I also have a link down in the description box below that if you shop directly through that link, you will actually get 30% off your order of any size. So check out that link if you're curious, and just for full disclosure, if you purchase through that link, then I also get 30% off my next order. So I don't get direct money or anything, but it does give me a discount on a brand and products that I adore. So just to wrap up my final thoughts here, I 100% recommend these cream tint pros from Salt New York. My palette is also incredibly high quality. It's absolutely beautiful. So I think it's worth purchasing them together. But if you already have a magnetic palette from you know, an, a different brand or one that you hold eyeshadows in or something, you can absolutely put those magnetic pans into whatever palette you want. I think Salt New York nailed the formula on these. I think they do exactly what they claim to do on their website. And that's always a win to me, is if the, the advertising and the marketing and the claims actually align with what the product does when you get it in your hands. If you can get that bundle discount or if you use my 30% off code below, I think the price becomes 100% worth it for these products. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I really, really loved making this because this is a product that has become a staple in my collection ever since I bought it. And I cannot wait until we can travel and I get to take this little thing with me because it just feels so, so beautiful and I love to own this. If you did enjoy this video today, please consider giving it a thumbs up and commenting down below to let me know which shades you would pick up first from Salt New York. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so before you leave today. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time.